In a recent video, I built a completely passively cooled and silent gaming PC in Streetcom's DB4. And while we did end up opting for a lower power solution than I had hoped for in the beginning, it was definitely the quietest system that I had ever built. But to say it was completely passively cooled, that's a bit of a lie. In fact, without any airflow over the motherboard's VRM, they were overheating pretty quickly. This produced insane stuttering while gaming, making anything pretty much unplayable, but we did eventually overcome this by mounting a small 40mm fan for additional cooling. The reason that I'm making this video is because I'm just not confident that the average or even intermediate builder would know what was causing the issue that we were seeing there, especially while the onboard sensors don't show the full story. And this sort of issue isn't going to be apparent just for the Streetcom DB4 and passive cases like that. There are many small form factor cases, even ones that I rate quite highly, that don't have fans next to critical components like the motherboard VRM or M.2 drive. So today's video is a quick little mod using these tiny little and powerful Noctua fans that will fix this very issue. And you could definitely experience this issue in larger builds too, but it's definitely something that you're more likely to come across in smaller, more airflow constrained builds, especially in cases under 10 liters. This includes cases like the Ghost S1, the Dan A4 SFX, and the Velka 3 and 5. Now, for lower power builds, this might not be too much of a concern, but if you are serious about cramming as much power as possible into a small volume case, this is definitely a mod you'll want to keep in your back pocket. Again, this could work for larger overclocked builds too, where you do want to implement your own active VRM cooling. After all, active cooling is usually considered a premium feature that's usually reserved for high-end motherboards, so let's see if we can do this ourselves. So it starts with these powerful little quiet fans here that some of you have probably seen me use in a few projects here and there. These are Noctua's 40mm fans, the NFA 4x10 and A4x20. These are the 12 volt PWM models, so they'll plug directly into your motherboard's four pin fan headers. They do also sell five volt models, just make sure you don't mistakenly buy those instead. Although these tiny fans spin up to 5,000 RPM, they do stay pretty quiet while doing so. We'll take a look at noise levels when the fans are actually mounted though, seeing as most of the noise is from the turbulent air. All right, so to test the thermal improvement and viability of doing something like this, I think my own system would be fairly appropriate for a mod like this. It is custom water cooled, although the VRM is not located near any direct airflow at all, but I definitely haven't encountered any VRM throttling during my time using it. The primary M.2 drive on the other hand is mounted directly underneath one of the radiator fans, so I do expect airflow there to be, at the moment, fairly adequate. Now how you mount the fans is up to you. You can make some sort of bracket if you really want to go all in, but double-sided mounting tape works good enough and you can't see it when the fans mounted, so this is what I'd recommend. Anywhere with a solid surface, this will work, and the area that the tape occupies is a dead zone for airflow anyway. I do recommend removing the sticker behind the fan hub though, you'll get better adhesion mounting the tape directly to the frame. Also, this mod is going to work best for heat sinks that have an actual fin array on them, or at least some cutouts like we see here. That way we are maximizing the surface area that's being covered by the airflow. For M.2 drive cooling, mount Mounting is going to be a lot trickier, especially if you're working with a compact sandwich layout case like this. I ended up mounting mine on the IO shroud, pushing air just generally downwards towards the primary M.2 NVMe drive, and as we'll see, the results here are actually pretty surprising. So let's take a look at some of the thermal tests now. Running the 9900KS in Blender for 20 minutes, the VRM peaks at 72 degrees C with no active cooling installed. That's not bad, certainly within a safe range, but we are working with a fairly decent board and a top mounted radiator that is bringing in some air at least into the case. When we install our 20mm thick 40mm Noctua fan, we do get a decent amount of cooling though. In the end, we're able to reduce peak VRM thermals by about 12 degrees C. If you do have issues with VRM thermals in your small form factor system, which we don't here, that thermal delta is enough to bring you back within a safe range. What's further is that reducing the fan speed from 5000 RPM to 3500 RPM, the thermal results aren't that different at all, but the noise difference is significant. As we'll see, 5000 RPM is mildly audible, whereas 3500 RPM is inaudible amongst the pump and radiator fans. Next up, I tested 
the slim 40mm fan at 5000 RPM, and seeing as this fan does move less air, we do get a slightly warmer result. Still though, an 8 degree improvement from stock isn't too bad at all. I will also note that you're not limited to just one fan here, there is sufficient room to mount up to two or three of these fans if you like, so you could potentially improve thermals even further if you want to make some sort of overkill active cooling mod. Now moving on to the M.2 drive, this was quite surprising. Here we're running a Samsung 960 EVO NVMe drive in Crystal Disk Mark for what is roughly a 5 minute read and write stress test, and without any active cooling we're seeing the drive top out at 84 degrees C. Not a bad result, but getting close to throttling territory if we were to push those rights any further. With active cooling, we're able to reduce peak thermals by a massive 15 degrees C. If you find your primary M.2 drive getting quite hot under load, this could definitely be a very effective cooling setup. Now, in terms of noise levels, I'd recommend using these fans at 3500 RPM and below. You're not really going to get much thermal benefit beyond that, and the additional noise levels are just not worth it. Now to control the fan curve of these tiny fans, if you're mounting to the VRM, I'd just recommend controlling them based off of CPU temperature. You can of course just do that within the motherboard's BIOS. For M.2 drive cooling though, it's a bit trickier, but I would recommend using a program called SpeedFan, where you can create your own fan curve based off of whichever thermal sensor is in your system. In this case, that'd be the thermal sensor from your M.2 SSD. So if you are building an incredibly powerful small form factor system, this might be a mod that you want to give a go, especially because without it you may be running into performance issues or even thermal throttling. If so, I will leave a link to these ones down below in the description. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.